Hi, my name is Leslie Nicholas and I'm a naturopathic doctor from the Integrative Medicine Department at Beaumont. And I'm here today to talk about the benefits of naturopathic medicine in your healthcare and just to give a, a general overview uh, about uh, naturopathic medicine and um, our Integrative Medicine Department. So uh, what is integrative medicine? For a lot of people, that's a, a, it's a new concept. Um, and integrative medicine basically encompasses all the modalities that you could possibly think of. And in our particular department, we have, um, we have acupuncture, we have guided imagery, we have uh, yoga therapy, um, we've got naturopathic medicine, we've got MDs who are trained in integrative medicine. Um, we just recently hired um, a, a registered dietitian who's gonna be working in our department um, because as we all know, we have to eat every day and food is really important and sometimes we just need a little guidance about how to do that properly. So to get into a little more specifics about what is a naturopathic doctor, so as a naturopathic physician, my job is to make sure that I get at the root cause of what's going on for you. There are many instances where a Band-Aid is put on something, and sometimes a Band-Aid is good in the short term, but to get at the cause of something is ultimately the way that you're going to um, uh, improve um, somebody's health and outcome and whatnot. So, um, and I apologize, I'll, I'll come back here to the, what is a naturopathic doctor. So a, a licensed naturopathic uh, physician has completed four years of pre-med, four years um, of a graduate school of an accredited naturopathic medical college, um, and has successfully passed the North American uh, licensing exam. So the colleges in uh, Canada and the colleges in the United States all take the same exact exam. Um, and then state by state, uh, there are licensing exams as well. Uh, currently right now, 17 states license naturopathic physicians. Um, unfortunately, Michigan is not one of them, but we're working on that right now. So um, I kind of got ahead of myself and I started talking about what is a naturopathic doctor. And like I said, um, we address the root cause of disease. Um, we like to treat the whole person, um, not just look at your kidney problem um, or your heart problem because we're all connected. It's not just about um, looking at that one scenario or that one organ. Um, and, and we work with the healing power of nature. I mean, nature's pretty awesome. Our body is really capable of, of healing itself in so many ways. Um, we all get little colds and viruses and flus and we seem to manage to get over those. That's the healing power of nature. That's our body, that's our immune system doing its job and, and bringing us to wellness and whatnot. So what do naturopathic physicians utilize as far as their modalities of treatment? Well, depending on what school you went to, um, like one of my uh, colleagues is also trained in acupuncture. Um, I don't happen to be trained in acupuncture, but um, we are trained in nutrition, we're trained in, in herbal or botanical medicine, we're trained in homeopathic medicine, um, obviously preventive medicine, primary care medicine, mind-body medicine, um, and that's a whole nother uh, chapter in and of itself. Um, we look at you as a whole person. <clears throat> so I'm not just treating your kidney, I wanna know, you know, what's going on at home? How's the home life? Do you have pets? Do you go for walks? you know what's going on in your life as it were so what is uh, a naturopathic doctor so we are not um, based on uh, well, I'd like to say we're based on grandma's old recipes. Some of those make it in there. Um, but we're actually based on evidence-based medicine. So a lot of people think, oh, the, you know, they don't base this on anything. But when, in fact, we use evidence-based medicine all the time. Um, and because of uh, the increased number of studies happening, we're finding out more and more about some of our natural medicines. And I think that's facilitating uh, better care of our patients. Um, so, you know, we're part of the healthcare team over at Beaumont. Um, we are experts in pharmaceutical drugs as well as natural supplements and their interactions. And that can be problematic. Even some people should not even be on supplements because they're actually sensitive to the gelatin in the, the capsule itself. So, um, and so we are also experts in the safety and efficacy of natural supplements. So as you know, some people might come into my office, you know, with a grocery bag full of, of supplements and I hopefully pare that down to a reasonable um, uh, amount of things that they might be taking and, and also looking at the quality of what they're taking. Um, I hate to say it, but the, the less you pay for something, the more likely it is that that supplement does not really contain what it says uh, on the label. Um, 
So, and moving on to the next slide. So who uses a naturopath? Well, quite frankly, I maintain that everybody could use a naturopath. And where I just came from, which is Oregon, um, there I'm a licensed primary care provider. Um, but here in, in Michigan, uh, we practice as specialists. So who could use a naturopath? Like I said, everybody. But of course, a lot of people come to us with digestive issues. Um, and, and that's everything from the mouth all the way to the butt, basically. Um, so whatever that issue is, we're pretty good at dealing with it. A Naturopaths have a propensity to get into um, uh, testing stool samples, looking at how digestive function goes and all that kind of good stuff. So um, we have to deal with the basic, which is we've got to eat every day. So if we're not dealing with that, then we're not getting at what's going on. Um, folks who have diabetes utilize naturopathic medicine. People who have anxiety, depression, um, people who have trouble sleeping, uh, people who have autoimmune disorders. Uh, we definitely help people uh, who are dealing with cancer not only during their treatment but after their treatment um, and uh, um, I, it actually assists in making their treatment work better with less side effects so I think that's an awesome part of what we do um, and then some people come to see us because you know they've been to 10 15 doctors and have not gotten the results that they were hoping for and um, and so they come to us hoping that we might be able to discover what it is that might be going on so I love this picture of this little girl. She, she looks happy. Um, so tips to avoiding disease naturally. So optimizing the train, this is, and we're gonna get into a little more detail on this, is like, so how healthy are your guts basically right now? Um, how good is your nutrition? How can we boost your digestive health? Um, can we avoid some harmful substances? And you know, everybody's heard the word detoxify. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more at the end. Um, and of course, the thing I think is the most important is um, enjoy yourself, enjoy life, um, because life is a gift. I believe that truly. And uh, I think the more we appreciate and are grateful for what's going on, the, I think that contributes mightily to our immune system and our well being. So optimizing the train, what does that mean? Uh, the idea of making your body an inhospitable host to intruders. So as an example, and we'll get into that in a little more detail, if you don't have the right flora going on in your body, it might be easier for a virus to take hold, basically, because the flora or the, the bacteria that live in your gut are so important to the health of your immune system. So that's one of the places where we can optimize the terrain. Um, and you know, giving your body the proper tools to heal itself. Uh, what I might prescribe for one person may, may be very appropriate for them, but for another patient, um, we need to change that, that plan, even though the two people may have the same conditions. Um, improving absorption and assimilation of nutrients. I can't begin to tell you how many medications, um, et cetera, et cetera, uh, actually end up b very much disrupting the digestive tract. Um, so much so that, uh, and some people have, have heard the term leaky gut or permeable gut, which basically means that the cells are no longer tight in their junctions. They're now a little more blown apart. And what does that mean? That means that everything can get through there. That means your immune system is overloaded with everything that's going down your gut, basically, including viruses, et cetera. So we want to optimize cell function, so that would be pulling them closer together so they can communicate better and function better as a whole um, so that the immune system is at its peak. So how can we, decreasing inflammation, inflammation is the big buzzword these days, if you haven't heard already. Um, inflammation is really the cause of, of the end organ damage and everything that happens with autoimmune disease. Let's take diabetes. Everybody's familiar with diabetes and everybody knows that um, typically people end up having uh, problems in their feet, in their hands, or in their you know, end organ damage of their kidneys not functioning as well, and end organ damage of, of the heart. Um, and so uh, what can we do to minimize that inflammation? And diabetes is a very specific thing, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more later. But so here's some anti-inflammatory ideas. So everybody knows the spice turmeric. Did you know it was an anti-inflammatory? Yes, it is. And so some people take turmeric in capsules and, and use that as an anti-inflammatory instead of um, using ibuprofen or aspirin. Um, so and another anti-inflammatory is uh, omega-3s, which are you know, present in fish and nuts and seeds and avocados and you know, things like that. So by and large, our diet is a little bereft of omega-3s, and we could all use a little bit more omega-3s. 
Um, you can decrease inflammation with exercise. That's a double-edged sword. If somebody over-exercises, you're actually going to increase your inflammation. And so, but movement is good. So I'd, I probably should put the word movement in there instead of exercise. And of course, decreasing your stress. Um, I like to always talk to my patients about that. You know that easy button that you pop, like easy is okay. If there's some way to do it easily, then I encourage people to figure out what that is. And just to pop into improving insulin metabolism, and this is not just about diabetics, we all need to um, improve our insulin metabolism so that we don't go into type 2 di diabetes as an adult, basically. So that includes exercise, and, and I like to, again, I'm gonna substitute the word movement. Sometimes exercise has is like a dirty word for some people, but movement, walking, anything. Some people who can't walk, I tell them to, you know, fling their arms around, that's exercise, that's the best exercise ever. Um, include protein at, at every meal. Avoiding simple carbs. You guys have heard these sorts of things before. Limit anything white. Um, and look at the glycemic index. And the glycemic index basically lets you know how much fiber and sugar is in, just to be very simple, in a, in a fruit or a vegetable. And um, the more fiber it has, the slower the sugar is absorbed. So something with a lower glycemic index is, is much better tolerated generally by all of us, as it were. It doesn't mean you can't eat the high glycemic things, just not all the time. Um, so, and balancing hormones is really important. This, this whole body utilizes hormones in so many different ways. When we say the word hormone, most of us think about estrogen and progesterone and testosterone. Well, it's not just those hormones. It's, it's cortisol. It's, it's all kinds of things. Um, but uh, without balancing these, it, it can make life very difficult. And just to let you know, there are a lot of nutritional ways to help the body come back to balance um, for helping hormones uh, make themselves, as it were. And um, these things are important to pay attention to. So how do we balance stress? Um, just to let you know, the nervous system has basically two parts to it. The, you know, there's the autonomic part and there's the sympathetic part. Basically the fight or flight part and the rest and digest part, the parasympathetic part. Um, it's just so important when people are eating to understand that you really should be sitting at a table and not driving your car and, and all those kinds of good things. I know we all do it. Um, but to be honest with you, um, food hygiene, which is not about how clean the food is, but it's about how you go about eating, is really important. Um, that you take time, perhaps, to be thankful for the food in front of you. Um, that you, you're sharing it with other people. That always makes it more fun in my book. Um, and, and that you, you're taking your time in eating. You're chewing your food, because digestion begins right here at the mouth with how uh, well you chew your food and that you're, you're not eating it in 2.5 seconds or less, basically. So, um, so you guys may have heard about the adrenal glands and when we talk about balancing that stress, it's the adrenals who are kind of mitigating that. I, I love the poor little zebra here who's losing his stripes. Um, but, uh, um, but basically symptoms of adrenal fatigue can include a number of things from hair loss to low energy to digestion not working well to poor blood sugar regulation. Um, for a lot of people it might be gaining a little more weight around the middle. Um, and, and of course, if you're in a high stress situation all the time, then you likely have some imbalanced adrenals and they're really trying hard um, to keep you in balance, essentially. So how do we improve our nutrition overall? Well, and you may have heard some of these things before, but eat a rainbow of colors. Eat a lot of different colors. I, I love the picture showing lots of different colors. Um, eat a whole foods diet. Um, shop around the perimeter of the grocery store. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but the perimeter is where the vegetables and the fruits are and the meats and, and all that kind of good stuff. The stuff in the middle is usually, you know, packaged stuff that, you know, we all love, you know, potato chips and cookies and all that kind of good stuff, but they're not good for us. Let's go more to the perimeter of, of the grocery store. And, and if I were to tell somebody um, what to put on their plate, um, I would say that um, the plate should be half vegetables, a quarter of a grain perhaps, and a quarter of protein, whatever that might be for somebody's diet. And, and as the slide shows you, um, a serving size of protein is about the size of the palm of your hand. Um, so just some basic information there. So, and then, is it really healthy? Are you reading labels? It's really important and probably way too enlightening <laughs> to read the labels. But there is a, if a label has a list this long on it, you might not want to be eating that food. That means there's a lot of extra stuff in there that doesn't belong there. It doesn't sound very whole foodish. Um, so look for things like hydrogenated oils or trans fats. Our body doesn't know what to do with those things. Um, 
and, and look for how much sugar I is in it. A the high fructose corn syrup, I can't begin to tell you how often that gets added into things. Even like things like green beans in a can. It's, it's kind of amazing to me. So get, get comfy reading um, labels and um, there's a lot of words. Quite frankly, sometimes I have to go home and look something up like, well, there's a new thing I've never seen on a label before. I wonder what that is. So you can always go on the internet and Google up what this stuff is. But I, I guarantee you, if it has a lot of stuff on the, on the ingredient label, then it likely is not a great food item uh, to consider and maybe look for an option that looks a little more whole foodish, as it were. And everybody likes to know about, well, how can I fight cancer? Because um, everybody wants that magic pill for that, right? Um, but if we're eating those multicolored fruits and vegetables, um, if we're minimizing grilled and smoked foods, um, we all know about the research around that. Um, tomatoes and guava have high levels of lycopene, which have been shown to um, uh, fight cancer. Everybody knows about organic green tea um, being very, um, uh, having anti-cancer properties to it and antioxidant properties to it. Um, I mentioned the turmeric before, um, also has, um, has anti-cancer properties because of its, mainly because of its antioxidant properties. And then of course the broccoli, that whole family right there, um, very excellent in, in fighting uh, cancer. So eat your broccoli. If you don't like it, maybe you should blend it up in a bullet. <laughs> so um, what kind of diets are, are there? Well, I'm sure you've heard about them all. Um, there's every single diet under the sun and, and why does one diet work for one person and not another? Well, you'll have to come see me to find out the answer to that. But uh, what I can say is that if I were to summarize what I think is the best overall diet for everybody, um, I think the Mediterranean diet probably comes the closest um, to uh, hitting the mark, as it were. Um, so you want to include, uh, like I said, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, plenty of clean water, and enough protein and whole grains. We can't not have grains, so we've got to learn to um, explore what some of the other grain options are. For example, quinoa, lovely grain, high in protein. Um, a lot of people don't know, um, you know, aren't familiar with quinoa, which is spelled Q-U-I-N-O-A. I used to pronounce it quinoa. Nope, it's quinoa. <laughs> so, um, then there's also the, I like, always like to bring up organic versus non-organic or local versus from 3,000 miles away. Um, because basically it's not the fat, right? We've all heard lately that fat is actually good for us. Um, it's the pesticides in the fat and all the other toxins that actually end up concentrating in fat. So I encourage people to buy organic meat, eggs, dairy, and oils, anything that has fat in it, buy it organic if you possibly can. And if you can't buy organic, and I, I understand how expensive that gets to be, but I think it's becoming more and more affordable as more and more of us are seeking th this quality of food. I think if you can't buy organic, if you could buy local, I think that's the next best thing. There are a lot of people who produce who are not certified organic, but they don't add any pesticides to anything that they feed um, their animals or don't add any pesticides to um, any of the direct food that they grow in, in the gardens. Um, and I just um, put up a list of the organic fruits and vegetables, um, uh, it's funny I say organic, that are most contaminated, so this is why I buy them organic. And apples, celery, cherries, grapes, I mean, you can read the list here, grapefruit, lettuce, nectarines, oranges. I mean, th this is considered like the top 10, top 20 bad guys list, as it were. So for some of these, they're most likely to be sprayed with some sort of pesticide and whatnot. So I really encourage people to try and find organic or local sources of those foods. Um, and then we've all talked about uh, genetically modified um, foods and, and the big controversy about it. And um, I'm not going to get super political on it, but I'm just going to say this, that the American Academy of Environmental Medicine reported that several animal studies have indicated serious health risks associated with um, a genetically modified food. So um, to be honest with you, I'm not interested in eating a tomato that's had some fish genes inserted into it. Obviously, we've been, um, horticulturally, we've been um, mixing and matching species together, I mean, within the same species together for, you know, hundreds of years. That's not what we're talking about. This is where you're taking some other critter, basically, and putting it into another food. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. We haven't had enough time to see the long-term outcomes of this. Um, and, and that's why I'd rather be safe than sorry and I try to avoid GMO food. And you're seeing more and more um, foods in grocery stores that are getting labeled um, that this food has um, no GMO food, uh, ingredients in it, basically. So um, back to some more ideas I just wanted to talk to you about, about um, drinking water. I'm, all of us typically take a shower, bath, 
every day or several times a week, whatever we might be. In England, they do it only a couple, maybe once a week. We're, we're interesting over here in the United States. Anyway, we put all that water on the outside of our body, and the inside of our body's going, hey, what about us? So I really encourage people to drink, and, and this is suggesting one to two liters of water a day, which would, could be a huge jump for a number of people who are not good water drinkers. I tell people to you know, aim for a gallon if you want to get off the metric system on that one. Um, but more water, better. And some people don't like the taste of water, and I say, well, squeeze some fresh lemon in it, um, et cetera, et cetera. Find a way to get that liquid in you. Um, eating healthy fats, we talked about that, um, like olive oil and um, omega-3s. Um, some people will cook with water instead of oil, you know, figure out the thing that works best for you. Um, and then this line is, if you don't know what it is, don't buy it. That's back to my reading the labels thing. Um, if, if you don't know what that is on the label, why would you want to buy that and eat that? Avoid MSG, that's an excitatory toxin actually, and I'm sure you know a number of people who have reactions to MSG and cannot have that. I think the biggest place where it comes up for most people is when they're thinking about eating Chinese food. But in fact, MSG shows up in many other foods. Um, so I highly recommend avoiding that. Preservatives, if at all possible. Um, artificial sweeteners, there's lots of evidence-based medicine out there that sh is showing how those artificial sweeteners are not good for us. If you, if you want to choose a sweetener, choose stevia, choose honey, choose something natural. Um, molasses is a great sweetener. You know, molasses is from refining sugar, and it's, it's actually all the nutrients is in the molasses, basically, and then there's the white sugar part. The molasses is actually more nutritionally good for you than the white sugar part. Um, mentioning olive oil and butter, um, butter's good. Don't think butter's bad. Butter's actually important. I, I wouldn't say go eat a whole pound a day or anything like that, but I would much rather have people having butter than margarine or any of the softened up um, to make it easy for you to spread it on things. Anytime it gets soft and easy to spread, likely it is some sort of trans fatty acid, not good for you. Your body doesn't recognize it, doesn't know what to do with it. Um, and of course, avoiding foods that you're sensitive to. So many people throughout their lives, they, they learn, um, oh, when I eat this food, I don't feel so great. And I wish more people would pay, actually pay attention to their body um, as to how they feel after they eat a meal. It might be a pretty informative session if we were open to listening to that. Um, and uh, so everybody always asks, well, what are the basic supplements that you, know, you would uh, recommend for a person, you know, n barring any condition that they might have. Um, so first off, we want to make sure, uh, does the person have any allergies? And when we talk about um, supplements, um, you know, what other ingredients are in there, um, binders, et cetera, et cetera, or, you know, other ingredients just to fill the capsule, well, that person might, you know, be sensitive that, to that and, and should not take it. Um, and does it interact with any uh, medications that you might be on already? So. Um, so the, the top four that, that I typically say are great for people is fish oil or omega-3s, um, because again, we don't typically get enough of that in our diet. Probiotics, and by that I mean the good bugs, the lactobacillus, um, and there's a gazillion um, lacto guys that, that belong in our guts. Um, a multivitamin can be nice because it can kind of cover some bases as far as providing some B vitamins because we don't store B vitamins, only B12, but the rest of the B vitamins are water soluble. So where do we get B vitamins from? Leafy greens, whole grains. Um, so we get them that day. So if we didn't have a great day of eating, then it might be nice to have a multivitamin on board that has some B vitamins that can help us um, in that regard. B vitamins are involved in almost every single reaction um, and metabolic process going on in the body. So they're, they're hugely important. Um, and then vitamin D, hugely important. Here we are in Michigan, um, which is a northern um, uh, state, as it were, and I just came from Oregon, where almost every patient I run into is vitamin D deficient. Um, and so I think it's really important uh, to know what your vitamin D levels are and to supplement appropriately. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, so it needs to be taken with food, just like the fish oil should be taken with food as well. Um, and, but know what your levels are so that you're not either overdoing it or underdoing it, as it were. So um, back to optimizing the, the digestive system. We talked about m the importance of good gut flora, that hence my probiotic recommendation. Um, removing foods that causes sensitivity for you or problems um, for you. Um, the importance of acid in the stomach. All of us make different amounts of acid that help us break down our protein. Um, some of us make too much acid and that causes problems like um, reflux and, and burning. Um, and then there's the rest of the digestive enzymes that come from the pancreas um, and then the bile that 
gets released um, uh, from the gallbladder that help us um, digest and help us uh, absorb our, our nutrients, basically. So, and food sensitivities, like how do people know they have a food sensitivity? Um, so we can call, there's levels from sensitivity to all out allergy to anaphylaxis, et cetera, et cetera. But it can be a minor thing. You might be eating a food, you know, this particular food may seem like a perfectly good food, but in your body it's causing a problem. And there, here's this whole list of, of food allergies, skin rashes, dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, irritable bowel syndrome, fatigue, suppressed immune system, autoimmune, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I can't begin to tell you how much, how important food is in a final outcome. When the digestive tract on the inside is not happy, it, it more likely than not puts something out on the skin. So um, we were wanting to minimize that scenario. Um, so back to the good gut bacteria. So it's not, it's not just about digestion that it helps, but it's about immune function. The majority of our immune system lines our gastrointestinal tract. So we wanna keep that gastrointestinal tract happy so that our immune system is happy. We want it operating at top function. Um, and uh, the other part of good gut bacteria is cholesterol metabolism, and like I said, digestion and absorption, and of course, cancer prevention. Because if we've got our immune system operating optimally, then we are taking ourselves out of that cancer uh, pile, as it were. So take care of yourself. How do you do this? Make your dream team before you need it, right? We always come to the crisis moment, like, oh my gosh, I need a doctor, whatever. But figure out who you want on your team of, of caretakers. Who's your primary care? Do you need any specialists um, that are helpful for you? Um, it might be a naturopathic physician. Um, it's great to have your team together before something happens. And of course, um, everybody has heard the old, uh, um, uh, saying an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I, I can't begin, uh, you know, begin to emphasize that even more. Um, my job is to try and prevent things from happening in the future besides treating what might be already going on now. So my job is to optimize how your immune system is functioning, how your digestive tract is functioning, all that kind of good stuff. So this is like take responsibility for your health. Um, you know, keep a health file. I think that's really important um, to have everything listed, all of your, um, uh, your um, medications, et cetera, et cetera. Um, detox your mind. I don't want to forget the mind part, just to let you know. Um, be aware of your thought patterns and emotions. Um, surround yourself with uplifting people and music. Acknowledge your soul through meditation, yoga, martial arts, whatever um, floats your, your boat that way. And I want to say that we do detoxification um, uh, panels at, um, at Beaumont, and I encourage you to come be a part of it. If you're ever thinking about doing a detox, it should never make you feel sick. So um, come see one of us naturopaths, and we can help you do it so that that does not occur for you. And some people go to the all-out sample cleansing diet, which you look at this list, gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, caffeine-free, alcohol-free, good protein, clean fruits and veggies, and what do I eat? There's a lot to eat. Don't worry about that. So I know I've given you a lot of information in a short period of time, but if you're interested in seeing any of us at the Integrative Medicine Department at Beaumont, um, please feel free to call this number, 248-964-9200, and we can connect you up through our sites both at Troy, Royal Oak, and um, Gross Point. Thanks so much for your time.